Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm an actor, screenwriter, and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Michael McGlone. Michael is an actor, writer, and a musician. As an actor, Michael's breakout role was in the Edward Birds film, The Brothers McMullen, as Patrick McMullen. He went on to work with Burns several more times, notably starring in She's the One. On the big screen, he's also been seen in films such as The Bone Collector, One Tough Cop, and Hardball. On TV, he's recurred on Person of Interest, recently guest starred on NCIS Hawaii, The Rookie Feds, and SWAT. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at theartistsworkethicpodcast at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. One last thing before we get started, Amanda Salco, who you heard in episode 39, has a really cool new business called Sound Capsules, and I'm going to let her tell you a bit about it. When my grandma died, I was so happy that I had a recording of her voice. We played it at her funeral, I've listened to it throughout the years, and I'm going to play it for my son when he's older. That's why I started Sound Capsules. It's an easy way to capture the stories of your loved ones and pass them down to future generations. I cannot think of a more meaningful gift to connect us with our ancestors and each other. We make it easy. The packaging is beautiful. So visit us at soundcapsules.net to learn more. That's soundcapsules with an S dot net. And thanks for supporting an artist owned small business. All right, Michael, thank you for coming on with me today. It's a pleasure, brother. So uh, a common theme on this show is that people who often end up with, with some success in the arts are the ones who are doing things that maybe not everyone else will kind of taking that next step going above and beyond what's an example of something that maybe you've done in your career or at the beginning of your career that encapsulates you know maybe that added value that you brought or that extra step that you took maybe the people to your left and right might not have done well i i can't speak for what others may or may not have done, but I will say that the first film that I made, which is titled The Brothers McMullen, was one that I got hired for for free. Nobody on that movie, when we were first making it, was making any money. We were there for the sheer love of it and to potentially have something for our reel going forward. And it was an event of pure enthusiasm to be doing what I love. If there is anyone out there who is beginning their career and they're wondering whether or not they should work for free, I would advise them to, as long as it's not going to put them at risk or there's, and everything's above board, you know, all those things being true, do it because you'll gain experience you'll you'll gain potential relationships that could exist in the future positively for you and you'll be doing what you love which is what everyone regardless of the income they garner or don't garner gets into this primarily for at least that's what most of the people that i've encountered come into the arts force is to express themselves in a way that's very satisfying to them. And I would, I would maybe add to that, that doing some of that work for free at the beginning of your career, it's also important to get that out of the way early on when you don't have, when you don't have, you know, other financial commitments in your life, you know, knock that out in your early twenties. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Because sometimes it may not make sense for you to carve time away to do something, though it can behoove you at at the beginning to make those sacrifices if your life can afford it for a number of reasons. Sure. 
So do you think your work ethic comes from how you were raised or, or some other external factor, you know, that's been an influence in your life? I think it comes from a genetic disposition. My father was a very hardworking person and I actually sense him in me in that way specifically. He was actually very hard pressed to get us to go to work when we were growing up though. So it's something that you can discover later in life, I find. Sure. Because when I was when I was growing up, if I wasn't doing something I loved, like writing poetry or acting on stage, et cetera, all of those things, my work ethic actually was quite good. Yeah. Though, as far as, you know, making the, the summer income, caddying, et cetera, we were probably better at avoiding work than we were at actually working. And that was that was our full time job avoiding work and making sure dad doesn't find out, <laughs> which which is, you know, that that is employment of a kind. I will say, though, as I as I touched on earlier, if I was doing something I loved, I had a natural work ethic. I wanted to do it. And I also, generally speaking, wanted it to be as good as I could make it. So that also motivated me to stay committed at a level that was p potentially higher than than someone who was not as enthusiastic to be in those circumstances. So I would say, yes, my, my father's personality and the fact that I have it in my own nature to be very motivated to deliver at a high level. My astrological sign is Leo, and I think that possibly has something to do with it as well. What sort of ways do you stay like fresh or, or current or active in both the craft and business of what you're doing? Well, I don't have an intentionality as far as staying current in business because that just naturally comes out of having conversations with my manager and having conversations with other actors and writers, et cetera. So my awareness of the industry and what's best and how to move in terms of strategy and getting myself and my projects out there is constantly evolving. And how I stay current is frankly, by continuing to work on my own projects and keep hustling my own projects. And then by virtue of that, the information of how you can get in front of somebody, how it's best to get in front of this person, how it's best to get in front of this person, because that can vary, that evolves from that. How I stay current in terms of my art form, again, keep working. It's about staying in your work. And I love my work. So writing for the screen, writing a book, doing a, doing a scene, even if it's comedic, just a, a fun message I leave for a friend, for me, that still has currency in my professional life because even if I'm leaving a fun message for a friend, going back to the work ethic and my Leo nature, I want it to be great. And I want it to be, I want them to be laughing on the other on the phone, et cetera, this type of thing. So it's always ongoing with me. For each character that you're playing and and you know, moving from role to role and character to character, how does the how does the work change that you put into it you know when you're doing your preparation or, or you know you're dissecting a script or a character i guess how does that fluctuate from piece to piece there are different reasons for a different approach i'll give you a couple of examples at least one approach would be to let myself and my own nature and my own personality be as free as possible because I identify that character is aligned with my personality and my nature. And so it's the, the cue is be as, be as much Michael McGlone in that as you can be because you and this guy share a lot. Another way would be if it's the opposite, where I don't see myself in there very much. So I need to see about discovering other people who might 
be a mimic for this person or reflect him more than I do. And then either mimic or absorb them into my nature, et cetera, and embody something that is different than myself. So it's either research my own nature to explore more fully who I am, or it's research someone else's nature to explore who they are to increase my capacity to represent them on screen. When you do have different projects that you're working on, you know, I know you do music as well. If, if you've got kind of music going on and, you know, film or TV, if, if you do any writing or comedy, and you're talking about goal setting. I, lo I love goal setting. I'm, a, I'm like a goal setting nerd. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, what's your approach to something like short-term goal setting, long-term goal setting, and just how you stay organized among what you're working on? There isn't always a very conscious process with that. And I think that's for a couple of reasons. One is that my life has shown me that flexibility is necessary given how many different things I do. If it's absolutely necessary that I stay focused on one thing, meaning I'm on a set and I'm shooting a movie and or a television show, there's going to be no room for anything else, period, because that's, that's what's called for and that's it. Yep. If, however, I'm shooting and I have a day off and I can get a vocal on a new track that I recorded in, I'll take care of that in the midst of that shooting schedule because I have the time to do it. If I'm on a, a job of my own that hasn't been monetarily rewarding yet, one of my pieces of writing, a show I've created, a novel, etc., I have found that if I have a goal for the day, that is the, the easiest to reach because I can say, all right, you're going to write five pages. And then I just don't get up until five pages are there. Sure. Though other goals have been more challenging, I would say to myself, okay, so this, this many days for this much content, though because my life is so variable, I couldn't put the time in or I, I wasn't able to put the time in to make that happen. So I had to be more flexible with that and adjust that. So where it's possible, and I think it can exact something productive in me, I'll set that. And other times I have to be looser with it for any number of reasons. So flexibility and, and just, you know, being able to pivot from one thing to another loosely, yes. I would say. How important do you find persistence and perseverance is to a career in the arts you know especially, especially <laughs> I'm, I'm, those... la I'm laughing because it's everything yep. it is absolutely everything your work ethic is your perseverance your attitude is your perseverance your heart is your perseverance everything is your perseverance everything about this thing is about staying involved and that's not just in the arts that's sure. your life. If you want anything in your life, personally or professionally, sticking with your goal, however flexible you have to be, which is true sometimes, is the key to making it happen. And if you do stick with it, it will happen. The universe universally rewards people who stay in the ring. I agree. And and I've seen that with with people who I'm surrounded with where maybe they're not the, you know, the, the A-list actor or, or writer or director or whatever, but the longer they stay in it, it's, it's almost like a, like an attrition happening. You know, the longer they mm -hmm. stay in it and those on an even plane with you start mm -hmm. to fall away as the months and years go by, kind of leaving a smaller pot of people with the mm -hmm. years of experience. I feel like that's been an important thing that I've seen, you know, with, with writing at least. The longer I stick with it, the better you get, and the less yeah. people that are around doing it <laughs> as well. You know? hey, there's that great line from A League of Their Own, if it were easy, everybody would do it. Sure, sure. That's... And that's that's true of what you're saying and illustrating and, and also what, what I was saying before. 
it, it's something that's going to take an element of sacrifice and it's going to take a certain amount of grit and at times patience and then hustle and balance. It takes everything that you are, in fact, to achieve it. Did you hit a point in your career where, you know, you sat there and went, this just isn't working for me. Forget it. I've got to go figure something no. else out. No. Um, and you just kept pushing on. That's great. No, it's there. I, I've said this actually to my mom in conversation on a, on a few occasions. I know that I'm doing exactly what I came here to do. For all the the momentary doubts and, and 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 penetrations of your psyche that can feel so negative, it hasn't ever felt natural or right that I do anything else to fill in gaps. Absolutely, sure. if you if you have to take on other employment in the midst of it, but it's not the force, forsaking of your uh, your artistic life. It's in addition to that temporarily. So that absolutely, because that's a part of your hustle. You gotta you gotta make things work, and yeah. you have to eat. And I, it's a there's a great line from Frank Sinatra's song "That's Life." I thought of quitting, baby, but my heart just ain't gonna buy it. So that's as close probably as I've come where, and I'm not even sure I've thought of quitting because I don't think that's true. But when I heard that line, I thought the, the, my heart just ain't going to buy it rang true with me because while I don't think I consciously thought of quitting, I have had moments where you feel down. And then I heard that line and I said, yeah, but my heart just wouldn't ever let me do that. Because my heart is 100% is in it, even if my thoughts and my mind might drift here or there, with, without ever a conscious thought of quitting, though. I, I can't remember a, a thought of that ever happening. Awesome. Is there anything that you want to plug before we go? My website, michaelmcglone.com, there are a number of different things there. I just appeared on NCIS Hawaii, and on the homepage of my site, there's a link for people to explore that if they want to. And there was another guest spot that I did on Rookie Feds, which there is a link to on my homepage. So if people want to go to my website, I, I, I'd love them to and explore the music and the performances and anything and everything. There are a variety of pages there for them to enjoy. Awesome. Michael, thank you for coming on with me today. It's my pleasure, brother. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at The Artist's Work Ethic, and check out theartistsworkethic.com.